Well, how's it going everybody and welcome back to TRF. Today's video is just gonna be a walk around of my boat. I realized that I did a walk around before I put all the electronics on, the extra electronic accessories, and of course, any little doodads that I added to the boat to make it fish the way that I wanted to. Uh, and so I wanted to sit down real quick, show you guys what I did to this boat to make it so special and why I'm in love with this boat, my favorite one I've ever owned. And then of course, we're gonna show y'all some fish catches from today of some big smallmouth bass here in New York. So stay tuned to the end. There he is, there he is, there he is. Nice. There he is. Oh yeah. If y'all are not subscribed, hit that subscribe button because I love fishing in this boat right here and also on the bank and in the kayak. I'm a multifaceted angler, but today's gonna be talking about my 2020 Skeeter FXR21. So starting here in the back of the boat, this is definitely one of the biggest back decks I've ever uh, had in a bass boat. And one thing that makes the FXR special is that they, that Skeeter boats returned to having the full entirety of the back deck open for battery compartments. So as y'all can see here, it is two halves that open the back deck just like this with complete access to all your batteries. I've got three crank, three trolling motor batteries and one cr uh, cranking main battery with accessories. I've got two power pole blade 10 inch, or 10 inch, 10 foot power poles. Uh, and then of course I've got the cool tray here that holds my, uh, my motor toter and the, the, the motor sticks. And then I also have a power pole charge unit down here as well. Uh, and so one other thing that I love about this back deck is not just the size, also the live wells. You know, Skeeters in the past, and a lot of other bass boats, have the live wells that go uh, from here and they open out. These ones eliminate the issue of fish flopping out of your live well by opening backwards. Um, and I just, I, I love that. I've had several times where I'm grabbing a fish for a tournament and he'll flop out of my hand and he'll flop on the back deck because the live wells used to open like this. And so they thought about that. Now the live wells open back. And I do have the, uh, the TH Marine coal system down here. This is the brand new TH Marine coal tags. I think they're better than last year. They've worked better so far, they don't fall off. And uh, I keep that screwed into the side of the boat. And they come with, uh, with floaties on them. They come with uh, color coordinated floats. But I found that if you have the fish being pulled up by its mouth the whole day, it's gonna have wear and tear on that fish. And so I actually cut a, a, a wooden you know, elementary school ruler in pieces and I screwed a hole in it and put the number on it for which number it is in the culling system. So I've got one through six. Uh, in order of which colors I like most. I like color red the most. That's number one. Uh, what's number two? Black, red and black are my colors. So I have the, the cold tags in there. And then y'all have seen nothing really changed from last year's boat to this year. But in this compartment here, I have my two big tackle bins. Uh, I did a full run through of last year's uh, tackle storage in my boat, so I'll have that linked below. It was a different boat. It was the 2019 FX20. This is the 2020 FXR21. And as you can see, I keep them in big Tupperwares. Right here, I have some soft plastics for smallmouth. I've got, of course, raid swimmers, Ned rig heads, drop shot baits, all that jazz. And then below the one that, of course, is less accessible is going to be the one that I'm not using as much. So my worms, my finesse worms, uh, my, my craws, my beaver flipping style baits, that's going to be on the bottom. And I put the, one, the box on top that I use most. Uh, the other side, not really a whole lot to show. I just keep my, my fire extinguisher in there, my tools, uh, some extra spare towels, a, uh, you know, a rope to, to dock onto the dock. But as we head to the front deck is where it gets exciting. Here's my Solix 12, which I use for mapping, graphing, all that jazz. I have loved the Solix line. It is a bit slow. I might go with the Helix next year or I might go all Garmin's, but I've got it, if y'all missed the video, uh, on a custom Boat Logics mount. This mount is incredible. It is like, it is so strong. I legit can't even move this thing. That's how strong it is. And I have a custom Boat Logics mount on the front as well. It has a Garmin on the top and uh, the slot for the Hummingbird on the bottom. And of course, they're networked via, via uh, Ethernet cables. Um, the Skeeter FXR seats, incredibly comfortable. I have loved these things. I feel like they hug my butt. I feel like they hug my butt a little bit more than the last one did. And of course they come with these handles here that I use almost every single time I get in and out of the boat. I'm pushing on the handle to stand up and sitting down by grabbing it like this. Not a lot of boats have a help to get you in and out of the seat, but these definitely do. They're wider than last year's while still keeping the cooler the same size. And uh, in here we've got waters and ice and it's a cooler. Not a whole lot there. The FXR21 has no shortage of cup holders, which is very important to us bass anglers because we know that we hardly ever use them for actual cups. We throw our extra lures in there, but today we actually do have a few cups in our cup holders. 
So my boat is not a, a smorgasbord of, of stuff right now. Uh, of course, underneath the boat, we have the hot foot, the gas pedal. I feel like some people don't exactly know what the hot foot is. It is basically a gas pedal for a bass boat. Most boats out there, uh, pleasure boaters, jet skis, uh, all that kind of stuff, it's not jet skis. Pleasure boaters, uh, yachts, any kind of pleasure boat, and even some bass trackers and other bass boats, you have the ignition is actually what gives it more power and less power. Uh, but on this boat, it's a hot foot, and most bass boats nowadays have that hot foot. So I would highly recommend it. I have a, a hydraulic jack plate. Well, there's the trim. The jack plate, there it is. It's lifting it up. That's the hydraulic jack plate, useful in, uh, in shallow water. And then another great thing about this boat is that they made the plier holders and the scissor area flat. The last few years of the FX, it was kind of angled like this. Now they are finally flat so I can fit all of my pliers, split ring pliers, scissors. I've got six slots right there and I can even fit two pairs of scissors in one slot. Uh, glove box, just the same as it was last year. Not a whole lot different except it does come standard with a USB plug. I did get the custom sound system put in, and this sound system is better than it was last year. Last year, the FX, it had the two speakers underneath the, uh, the step here, and it only resonated toward the back. Now we've got a speaker here and a speaker underneath my seat, and I feel like anywhere on the boat, I can hear the sound a whole lot better than I could last time. So with that said, let's jump up to the front deck, which is the exciting part. One addition that we actually added to the boat today is a pair of Maui Jim sunglasses. We found these in the water today, and they just add a whole lot of spunk to, uh, to the FXR. It's my mom, I'm sorry, this is probably really nasty. Oh. <laughs> probably shouldn't put on somebody else's glasses, but these are, these are, uh, oh, these are actually Ray-Bans. They are Ray-Bans with prescription. And this person wasn't too blind, honestly. They're really not that blind, just a little bit. But <laughs> well, you look good with them on. Do I really? Oh yeah. Comment below how good I look with these Ray-Bans. But uh, all jokes aside, if you lost a pair of Ray-Bans and you live in Clayton, New York, uh, I found them, so shoot me a DM. But on a serious note, the front deck is where I spend all of my time, and it's incredible. The front deck of the FXR is so big. It's awesome. I can just do cartwheels and flips on this thing. Um, I have the day box on this side, which has been standard in all scooters for a while, where I keep all of the stuff that I have, uh, that I'm using on kind of the, the trip that I'm on. So I've got Strike King Ned rigs, I've got Outcast hair jigs, I've got some fluorocarbon leader material, I've got an extra reel in there that I'm gonna spool up later on uh, this evening. Just kind of random stuff that I'm gonna use throughout the day, I keep in the day box. This side here, I only, oh, it's locked. Now I only brought a few rods on this trip. Um, I think 27 is how many I brought. <laughs> uh, majority of those I'm probably not gonna use. I'm gonna give a few of these away on my Minnesota meetup, which is, by the time this video comes out, probably in the next few weeks, I'm doing a Minnesota meetup sometime in July. Make sure you guys are uh, staying tuned. I'll make sure that we're wearing face masks or whatever the proper uh, COVID-19 stuff is. But I have all of my rods in here. Um, it comes with a mega rod tube way down there, which is basically a bigger hole. A lot of boats have the singular tubes that can maybe fit one or two rods in them. I found that the, the mega rod tube is actually very, very helpful. I was incredibly skeptical at first, uh, but I'm definitely a fan of it at this point. You know, I've got, I don't know, 20 or so bait casting rods and six or seven spinning rods in New York. I'm only using, at least so far for smallmouth, uh, five spinning rods and one bait caster. We're probably gonna do a little bit of largemouth stuff here soon, but I love fitting as many rods as I can and I can fit 27. I've probably got room for about 15 more, so pretty cool. Uh, I do put a liner on the inside, so Colton, come on in here and, and maybe adjust the lighting. So as y'all can see, uh, the boat does not come standard with this cheap carpet. I put on this cheap carpet, that way the reels, when I'm bouncing around, don't hit this fiberglass. It does come standard with a, a padded thing all on the bottom, so you're fine on the bottom, but if you stuff a bunch of rods in here, you're gonna have an issue um, with the, those reels and rods kind of clanking on fiberglass. So I do uh, put some cheap carpeting down there with some sticky tape. And that's all the, uh, all the accessories I have in the rod box. So now moving on to the tackle. This is where all the fun is, man. This is where I keep all my tackle. It is super simple. I really don't keep a whole lot of stuff in my boat. Um, I've got some random hooks that I kind of keep up here in the top along with my box that I have for crappie fishing. I've got two individual tackle trays, or individual tackle um, boxes, you can see. They come out of the Skeeter. Let's say you want to take them inside your hotel room for a tournament. I have two individual big boxes like this. 
it slide nice on in there and I can keep uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, about 12 full size tackle boxes in these right here. And of course the Bass Mafia with that terminal tackle is in, can, uh, is a little bit thicker. So I've got to combine it with the Alabama rig box. I got some random assorted lures. I keep all my spinnerbaits in this box. And of course they all fit nicely. Whether it's, whether it's a spinnerbait box, my a JJ's Magic Dip, that all fits nicely in the sides. And then here in the bottom, I've got a thing of soft plastics. It's kind of like an addition to my day box. It is soft plastics that I'm gonna be using on this trip. And I also take this one with me when I head off to the pond. So I've got a pond lure uh, soft plastic bag right here. If y'all missed my, my top uh, pond lures or the pond necessities you need, I will have that video linked below. And I always keep um, my pond box, which is right here there it is that's a mixture of pond lures i need and this one right here is usually a mixture of lake and pond soft plastics that way when i'm ready to hit, you know go with somebody else's boat or ready to hit the trail and find a pond on google maps i can uh, take these two with me right here so i keep it simple man i can i can put so much more tackle in here i can even fit about Four, three to four rods on each side. I just really don't have a necessity for that right now. And so I keep it pretty dang light. Big swimbait box, big terminal tackle, and about eight other boxes ranging from crankbaits to jigs to jerkbaits and everything in between. So that is the tackle. Of course, all the FXRs come with LED lights that are on the courtesy lights panel down there, make everything easy to see when you're rigging up late at night. And that is the tackle. So as we move over to this side right here, we've got one more box and that is my like general accessories box. So in here, make sure my rods don't fall out. We've got where I keep all of my life jackets, uh, my YOLO sticks, whether it's the one with the light on it or the one that I use for filming. I've also got the YOLO tech boom which uh, fits nicely in the, uh, the seat post on the back deck. That way I can get an even higher shot than I could normally. I've got some underwater accessories for underwater filming, uh, my throw cushion, my fire extinguisher is back there. And you won't, you won't you know, believe why I need this, but I keep an umbrella. And I keep an umbrella in the boat just in case I start rigging up and I don't have any rain gear with me and it starts raining and I can literally just stick the umbrella right here and I can rig up tackle while the umbrella is, uh, is sitting over me. It's actually saved me a few times when a thunderstorm has, uh, has come up. And so always keep an umbrella in the boat. And that's basically it in terms of my bass boat. It is nice and simple. I love the wide deck of the FXR. We've widened the deck. That makes the ride better because of course the hole was widened. It honestly drives, not really supposed to mention competitors, but it drives like a Ranger from 2003, like an old, old Ranger, the way they used to be before they got changed. This boat rides incredibly well. It's still fast and it hits waves so smoothly. So as we move to the final thing up here at the top, we have my power pole switches here up and down the foot switches i have them uh the the software update where it's the one touch up and down i've got the Minn Kota Ultrex. so far the best trolling motor on the market uh, i'm looking forward to testing out some more competitors uh in the near future i'm not you know specifically with any companies i bought this one most almost all this stuff i bought uh full price if not with a discount on it and then here i have the boat logics mount that fits the garmin for live scope up here and then i have a solix 10 that goes here as well but especially if i'm bed fishing and not fishing an offshore spot i don't really need uh this solix unit right here so i leave it off just for, just for convenience sake as i'm as i'm walking around the boat so and that should be it everybody for our boat walkthrough. actually actually hold up one of the most important things, this right here, my engine. I love this thing. This here is my Yamaha SHO 250. I have loved this engine. It's, it's very, very fuel efficient and so powerful. I've never had a single thing go wrong with my SHO and uh, it's big, it's a big boy. Uh, I think I've got a 24 pitch prop on there, maybe a 23 pitch. I don't really pay a whole lot of attention to, uh, to props, but the back of my boat has, of course, security of the power poles and the power of the Yamaha. So that's going to be it, everybody. Hope that you enjoyed. And as you promised, here are some big smallmouth fish catches from me and my buddy Colton out here on New York. Thanks for watching. That looks like a bag. Yeah, I don't think it is. No way. Oh, I'm a joke. I told you it was a bed. <laughs> Colton's got one on the drop shot. Oh, oh we got a jumper. You're a genius. Yeah. There we go. That's a chunky fish right there, man. And just like that, the, uh, the drop shot strikes again for big summer smallies. Give me, some, give me some of that. Boom, baby.
gosh. Oh, I, oh gosh, dang it. Biggins. Oh, no. Dude, he had my hair jig. I don't know what happened. He must have had it by the hair, not the jig. That was a big one. Crap. Yeah, that was a big one. That's the advantage of the hair jig. You can make long casts in front of you and get those fish that are carousing. Got it. There he is. There he is. There he is. Nice. There he is. Oh, yeah. Now, folks, this is not a uh, flogger catch. <laughs> This is a hair jig catch. Yeah. Here we go. On the hair jig. Ugh. Not a giant, but cool to catch some cruisers. Definitely haven't gotten a whole lot of those in this trip. Just popped out. Outcast hair jig. I'll leave it linked in the description. Little buddy. Three pounder. I don't know. I'm going to post this one on Instagram. If you all don't follow me on Instagram, you should. At Tyler's Real Fishing. Good. Good. Literally let it sit right there. Move it. Move it. I don't think he's gonna eat, man. Let's, let's move on. Gosh. Oh, you got him? Oh, you got him now. Nice. <laughs> As I said, let's move on. He didn't like watching people watching me. No. He wanted to be a. Uh... There we go. Nice one. Nice one. Come here, big cat. Oh. Colton's got a big. Watch the trolling motor. Watch the trolling motor. Right there, yeah, not a big one, but you know what? It's a fish I've got on the fish. drop shot. Finally, Ada, he just didn't want somebody watching him on the cone. Oh, you got him. Yes, sir. Colton's got him. Oh, gosh, is that big? Uh, two, two and a half. I don't know, man. That one seems a little bigger than two. Oh, I, I keep grabbing the flogger. Why am I grabbing the flogger? I gotta grab the net, Tyler. Nice, no, nice, nice, and, nice and simple. Let him play you. I know Colin likes to get played. It's kind of his MO. How's that my MO? <laughs> it's tough. It's a tough MO to have. Oh gosh. There he, goes. there he is. Nice one. That's a chunker. That is a chunker. Look at that fish. Holy cow. Let me get us away from these rocks and I'll get the camera. Here we go. Lift that one up here, buddy. Look at that. Caught him on a little bed. I hope he's bleeding. Let's get him back in the water real quick. Oh, sorry, Chief. Nice job. Give me some of that. Boom. 